What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So wheel bearings are in, just laid down some powder on those rear knuckles. And as soon as those are done, we are going to attempt pressing those rear wheel bearings in and then we can start mounting more of that rear suspension back up. And after I get through as much of the rear suspension as I'm able to, I am then going to move on to attempting to crack loose the nuts on that input and output shaft from the transmission. So I have those sitting right here on the shelf. So what I mean is this nut right here on the top of this one, and then there's a nut on the one that's laying sideways in there as well. Both those need to get loosened in order to start pressing these gears off so we can pull the synchros out and drop in some brand new ones. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do, accomplish this because you really need to have something that can hold this uh, without damaging it to get enough torque on that to loosen it. And I believe the nuts on here are torqued to like over 200 foot pounds or something. So you definitely need something to really clamp that thing hard and yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet. I may experiment with a few ideas just to see, but it is also possible that I will need to take it to a local driveline shop to hopefully have them do it for me. I did call a local driveline place uh, that I've used in the past this morning, and they did say that if I was unsuccessful, I could bring it by and they would take a look and determine whether or not they have the capability of doing it. And it seems like they would, but they weren't well versed in these specific transmissions from Subaru. And so they didn't really know what these uh, input and output shafts looked like. So yeah, if I can't figure it out, I'm gonna take it down there and just pay them to crack those loose. I really don't think that they would have much trouble with it. So I imagine that it really would not cost very much money. And it would definitely expedite the whole process. So, so now I'm just gonna wait for the rear knuckles to finish baking out in the oven. I shot more of that blackjack like I did on the front knuckles. Uh, the blackjack is from Prismatic Powders and it looks really good. It's like a really nice flat OEM black. So if you haven't seen me shoot that on this channel before, you're in for a real treat because these things turn out real nice. So uh, yeah, we'll wait for those to flow out. I think for the blackjack, it's like, 15 minutes at 375 or something like that. So wait for it to get up to temp in the oven. And the way you determine that is using one of these little infrared temp guns. You just open the oven door, shoot the parts. And then once they are up to temp, then you can set your timer for that 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it is. It always says on the bag that you get the powder from Prismatic, so that's really handy. You always have it right there, so you'll never forget. Then after the parts are all cooled down, we can bring them over here and work on getting these OEM fresh wheel bearings pressed into those knuckles. So I've never done this before, so happy to get to try it and show you guys what I figure out and hopefully they go in without too much trouble. They look brand new. So I have all the pieces here laid out. I also did uh, these pieces here, uh, turned out super nice. So very happy with those. And then our fresh set of OEM wheel bearings and seals. So I'm gonna jump into this and start using this trusty old Harbor Freight shop press and we'll get this knocked out hopefully without too much trouble. I did have to order a couple things to make sure that we could do it correctly without damaging those seals. One being this like massive 41 millimeter socket. All right, so first and foremost guys, uh, this wheel bearing does appear to be symmetrical. So I think it can just drop in either way. Uh, there's like this little plastic insert in here. That's, uh... 
All right, so once you push that little plastic insert out, uh, you'll have the race here. I've grabbed the old race from the worn out bearing. I'm gonna use that to press this one in. And then these are the snap rings that we'll need to get inside. So just set that in there. This one, like so. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to use this old diff bracket. It might just bend it though. Not quite enough. We need to go just past that spot where we can insert the snapper. Oh wow, perfect. So this is what I mean guys, right here, this, this little ridge. I'm pressing it so it's basically like level with the top of this ridge so that we can slide this thing in there, slot it into place. So we are like pretty much right on the money, right level with that spot. All right, so let's see if we're gonna be able to put the snap ring in there without too much trouble. If I can get a hold of the dang thing. Oh yeah, that was pretty smooth to be honest. that on there like so. And now, I believe the bearing, this one goes on here, I think, like this. Let me make sure though. Okay, yeah, confirmed. It is confirmed. So we are gonna press this over the top like that. I'm gonna use this Company 23. Um, what is this thing? Ball joint uh, tool. And the thing that's cool about this is it fits over the spindle. So you need something that can fit over this. Um, I got this socket thinking that I needed something, but apparently I didn't. And the problem with this thing is it doesn't actually fit over there. So I forgot that this thing was what I had used. So, oh well, now I have a massive socket that I bought for 10 bucks off of Amazon. Um, all right, let me take this over to the press. All right, I got us pretty lined up here. Spring this down slowly. Put some tension on it. Close. So now I'm gonna install this backing plate. These are directional, so you can't mess them up. Like they'll only fit one way. And um, like if I try to put this one on here, it, it's not gonna line up with the holes. There's a left and a right plate, but uh, like I said, you can't mess it up. You just find the one that uh, fits. Oh, and I need to find this little rubber insert. Hang on one sec. Put you back in place here. Get. All right guys, so silver lining with the socket, because it doesn't fit over the spindle, it's going to serve a really good purpose for pressing this inner bearing in because once this contacts the spindle, it won't push the bearing in any further and we'll know that it's in far enough without damaging it, so. Guess I'm glad that I ordered it anyway. Looks like it's in there. Can't really tell if the bottom is pressed in all the way. All right, the Company 23 tools for the win again. Um, I slid these bad boys under there because the wood was kind of like flexing in and I think it was preventing us from being able to press everything well enough. So 
Um, I did this and then I pressed it again and it seems like it's in there where it needs to be. Yeah, it feels nice and smooth. I can't like really, I don't feel any play whatsoever. Um, probably won't really be able to tell that much until I put it on the car and then I'm really able to kind of like reef on it, but um, you can see that it's nice and like flush in there. I turn it, looks pretty dang good. Um, just gotta insert this back seal and then we're done with this side. And once again, guys, the old race, look at that coming in clutch. It's nice because this fits right around that lip. This one with the the bigger boot right here, or the bigger lip. So this fits right over it like that. There it is. All right, so I'm gonna bust this other one out off camera and just knock it out real quick. It's gonna go way faster without having to film stuff. So I'm gonna get that finished and then we will start throwing stuff back on the car. All right guys, so got the second one all done and everything is feeling nice and smooth. I also threw these bushings back in. I actually forgot that I still need to refinish these parts, the trailing arms and then these little brackets that connect to the uh, lateral arms. Um, I painted these when I built the wagon and I just don't like it anymore. Uh, there's too many like clashing colors up in here. And so I just would rather uh, refinish them in the black that I did on the knuckles. And unfortunately my air compressor is beat. Because I was using the crap out of it, sandblasting all of these parts for the rear knuckles, uh, it's so tired, it's just like not working well. And I have a new one coming this week on Wednesday. So it's just a few days away. So I'm gonna wait because the new one that I got is going to be able to do so much better of a job. Like it'll be so much faster to sandblast parts. I'm not gonna be able to like fully mount up as much as I thought. So uh, that's a little unfortunate, but I'm just gonna hang this thing. I just wanna get an idea of what it'll look like back here. Yeah, hopefully uh, in the next video, I will be able to get these all sorted out and uh, remounted on the car and we'll pretty much have the rear end ready to go. I'll install the axles and all that. So uh, we should have a rolling shell actually in the next video. So that'd be really cool. So I have started to press the gears off the shaft, um, as you could see there. So pretty cool. Check this little thing out. This cool little roller bearing. It's pretty neat. So it's like the gear was like down on the shaft like this. And then this piece and the roller bearing slotted. Right in like that, so the gear can move. Pretty slick, eh? I love opening parts up like this uh, that I'm not familiar with because it gives me a better visual representation in my mind of like how it all works. And then I just understand it better. So now that that's off, this whole piece can just slide. So the synchro right here, that's the little synchro ring. And there's these like little pins in here. I guess these can actually come out. Um, and uh, I don't really know if when you buy any synchros, if it comes with this whole sleeve, it might. And yeah, now it looks like we'll have to clamp this gear and push this whole assembly off. Definitely put this off for way too long. Uh, so far it has not been as challenging as I was anticipating. But this one, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about yet because the gears actually don't fit up through the bottom bracket of this uh, press. I gotta think of a solution. 
Alright, so this is that whole piece. This one had a roller bearing as well. Looks like that just comes off like that. Got another synchro there. This looks like it's all one piece. Just take a look at this whole piece. Shaft. Looking good. Yeah, man, that really wasn't too bad, to be honest. This one, however, I'm not sure about that one yet. All right, guys, so it is several hours later, and stuff just escalated quickly here, trying to figure out a solution for these uh, output gears. Let me show you what I have going on here. So the first thing I tried is actually went to Home Depot and got some, like, steel pipes, which this thing... And then I, I, I moved this thing, dropped it all the way to the ground, and then put the steel pipes across and tried that. This thing bent them immediately. Then I tried this thicker steel pipe that I had in the backyard uh, and cut it in half. It was just like a piece of scrap. Also bent that right away. So what I ended up doing is cutting this thing, the, the steel bracket here for the shop press, and that way I can kind of slide these as needed, which uh, so far, uh, looks like it's uh, working. Um, I had to take the bottle jack off and bleed it again. Uh, I've bled this thing probably four times since I bought it and I haven't had it that long. Um, kind of had issues with the bottle jack part of it uh, ever since I got it out of the box. Yeah, I don't know, just like, I've tried everything too. Uh, I've filled it with fresh uh, hydraulic fluid. Um, yeah, messed with it a bunch. However, I did just start to hear it kind of like move this thing. It sort of like popped at once. So I grabbed the camera real quick and uh, cause I honestly just didn't think it was gonna have the juice to make this happen. So I'm gonna set the camera on the, up on the tripod and hopefully we can actually press at least this gear through and uh, we'll see if we can get the other ones as well. Keep it moving. Yes, dude, yes. I win. That's a sweet little bearing. Look at that thing. Actually, it's not really little. It's pretty damn big, actually. And this setup was definitely pretty key. I just put a bin with a big, uh, like, moving blanket in there and have it propped up on some cinder blocks just so it doesn't fall very far. Well, guys, as you can see, I had switched out the bottle jack. Ran over to Home Depot real quick because I just wanted to see if it was that jack. And sure enough, it's working. So, I guess that bottle jack was just a piece of crap. All right, so that was the last one, I guess. This one just slides right off. So now we can access this synchro. So now the only thing that's in question is, will I be able to successfully press everything back together. Obviously that remains to be seen. There's another sinker down there. Maybe we do, hang on, let me see here. This just looks like it would be a really tricky one to get off of here because there's nothing to grab a hold of like those other ones, so. Mm -hmm. 